Hello, Simon here again. I'm going to give you a more in-depth view of what Tech Tree Tool does. Tech Tree Tool is designed for creating structures where the player can build or research items which then enables other items to be built or researched or achieved, whatever you like. Uh, when building these items I've used the term blueprint for the um, template of the item and a unit for when the actual item is built inside the game. And of course when you're building things they cost resources as well. So the first thing we need to do is create a tech tree model and that will open the editor up straight away. Now what you want to do is put the actual model in its own folder because a whole lot of other files get generated next to that model file. So we'll keep them neat and tidy and put them in this folder. Okay, let's look at the first tab, resources. Resources are things that the player spends in the game to build uh, or research. Um, blueprints. So a resource might be research points for example um, and of course you might have credits or dollars. Notice the little green button adds and the little red buttons delete. We're going to make these resources automatically regenerate at a certain rate while we're in the game. You can also programmatically add and subtract from these resources in your own code. So if we've got things to spend, we need things... If we've got resources to spend, we need things to spend it on, which is where the blueprints come in. Blueprints are divided into groups. So you might have a research group, And you might have a structures group, and you might have a uh, mobile units group, for example. We click the little green button to add a blueprint to the research group, and we'll keep it simple. Let's call this blueprint electricity. Um, it's going to take three seconds at least research and it's going to cost uh, 20 research points okay once we've researched electricity we can research computers they take a bit longer to build and a few more resources 50 research points to be able to research. Now these blueprints by themselves won't do anything. We need a factory object uh, which is actually responsible for building these. Now a factory object is just another blueprint. Um, let's call it the lab. And what we do is we say this is pre-built at the start of the game so it automatically becomes a unit and it's a factory type unit and we can just add everything from that particular group, the research group uh, and that will build all those items so it's a very basic tech tree now what we're going to do is load up the test scene for one player Go into the game and we'll select our new tech tree here. And when we press play, we'll get a screen which shows all our units in this column, units that we've built. And when we select a unit, it will show things we can build with that unit over here. Now because the lab is already pre-built, it already exists in our in our GUI here. So we're going to build electricity. Notice it goes into a queue here, it builds, and then it becomes a unit itself. 
and of course it's not a factory unit so we can't build anything with electricity itself but if we go back to the lab notice we can now build computers so that's a very very simple research tree if we go back to our editor let's add some structures which depend on these research items so let's add a building called a generator now it's going to take six seconds to build and instead of costing research points it's going to cost credits let's add um, 50 credits and to make that depend on the electricity research we can just join them like so and just for fun let's add a another structure we'll call it the power station and let's pretend that a power station needs computers as well so now when we hit play oh, first of all we need a factory yes we need a factory to build these guys so let's add a new structure let's call it the construction yard and let's make it we won't make this one pre-built we'll make the lab build the construction yard um, so we select construction yard it's going to take five seconds to build and he'll take a little bit of research and a little bit of credits from the player when we're building. Now we go to the lab and we're going to add the construction yard. And just to make it obvious we can put a link there like that as well. Now we're going to make the construction yard a factory as well. So we'll set him up to be a factory and we're going to add the structures group. Okay, let's see if this works. We run our test scene. Select the lab. Notice we can build a construction yard or research electricity now. If we build a construction yard, it becomes a unit. We can select that, but we'll notice the construction yard can't build anything yet. If we research electricity and go back to the construction yard, we can now build the generator. And it follows our tech tree here. Now, once we've built a power station, perhaps we can build a power engineer, which will take five seconds, and he will only cost a few credits to build. Now we might want more than one power engineer in the game. So let's select him. I'm going to allow multiple units of the power engineer to be built. And the factory for him will make the power station. So we'll set the factory flag and then we'll add oh, we need to move the power engineer. We need to move him into the mobile units group. Okay, now we go back to power station. We're going to add the power engine here. Okay, now we press play. Go to the lab. Let's build the electricity and the construction yard. And then computers. Now, if we go to our construction yard, we can build the generator. and now we can build the power station. Our power station is already complete, so now we select the power station and we can build multiple power engineers. Now notice it's building them uh, in a synchronous manner here. What we can do is if we go to the power station 
we can change the, um, the factory type. This is coming in the next version. We can change the factory type to be a parallel type factory, which means it will build everything we assign to it all at once as quickly as it can if the resources are available. Now, the power station built a little bit too quickly, so let's change, yes, the time was wrong, so let's set it to two seconds. Now, we've got a button up here called Show Charts. If we select that, it shows the times in blue, and then the resources according to the colours that we've assigned here. Just gives you a relative idea of the, um, the costs in resources and time to build each blueprint. If you want to edit them all at once, we can go to the Costs tab, and you'll see a nice little graph here, um, which shows all the blueprints here. We can toggle them on and off just to work on a few at a time. But it just lets us build. We don't need time for the lab. It just lets us uh, build a nice, um, a nice progression difficulty or, or costs in resources in a visual way. So if we go back to blueprints, I'll show you one last thing. Perhaps the power station can also build another unit called a, uh, let's just call him a power worker. It'll take one second, I'm going to allow multiple and um, it's going to cost a few credits to build. But perhaps in our... Oh, we need to move him to mobile units. There we go. Perhaps in our game we only want the player to be able to decide between power workers or power engineers. What we do is we select the factory which builds them. Let's add the power worker to that factory. What we're going to do is set the mutex flag on that factory. What that will do is when the player builds the power station, if they build the power worker, the power engineer will become unavailable and vice versa. So it's a little bit more in-depth overview of how the tech tree tool works. I'm happy to help anyone that buys this asset and get it up and running in their game. Just drop me an email and I'll do my best to help you out.